Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'm Sanjay Ayagari. I'm a senior solutions architect for Telco at Red Hat. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about mobile edge computing uh, in support of IoT. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk these days about uh, mobile edge computing. Um, the concept is, uh, is that uh, as networks are getting built out more and more and they're getting virtualized, it's possible to run workloads other than traditional networking workloads in distributed sites. Um, and that means that you could actually uh, do a lot of interesting things that go beyond uh, the, uh, the normal uh, networking services. So uh, this, so I thought I would uh, give a little context to this. Um, you know, we've had, uh, you know, we've had uh, the concept of IoT devices that today, to a large extent, are talking to public cloud services. That's how that's how it, how you do it today, right? Um, generally, you know, generally most. Uh, vendors of these devices aren't going to build their own cloud unless they're particularly large. They're not going to build their own cloud to uh, go service, um, say, remote cameras or remote um, surveillance uh, um, security systems, e you know, even uh, other types of things. What they're going to do is use a public cloud, put their application there, have a lot of compute capacity in there. And the, the uh, you know that's generally been the way it's been going. The challenge is that um, if you have situations where you really need to have more localized services and and break it down more, uh, then the uh, local sites then it becomes interesting to actually run some of these workloads not necessarily in the public cloud but closer to the users so that you can deliver services at a uh, lower latency, uh, have better quality of service to those users. And this is an interesting use case for telcos, an interesting business model for telcos, because they've been looking at, um, you know, in the telco vertical, it's particularly uh, uh, sometimes troubling when uh, uh, we're looking at how, how do telcos create new services and generate more revenue than just plain bandwidth. And this is one of the, one of the ways that uh, that can be done. Um, so if we look at, so if we, so how are we gonna, how are we gonna do this in a mobile edge, mobile edge cloud? Well, that means breaking down IoT into sort of different areas because it's not just one big service, but you've really got some functionality that's really data center functionality, uh, you know, long-term analytics, et cetera. There's controller functionality. How do you intelligently control, um, say, a security system um, if you don't have connectivity to the long-term data or you don't have the authentication or maybe you only have the snapshot of the authentication. How do you control that access? And then there's the actual end device. And what, the reason these end devices are getting so much cheaper is not just because of processing power, but because the processing power doesn't actually have to be in the end device. It can be in the cloud. So now your end device doesn't have to be loaded with tons of image processing power, right? You just send the images to the cloud and let the, let, have a big uh, workload there that's churning through it. There leads to an interesting problem. So we all know what happened on Friday, right? So should everything be in the public cloud? Because these uh, surveillance cameras and other devices that are out there were hacked into, used as a botnet, and had access to go out and do damage on the global internet. Uh, the east coast of the United States was, uh, was severely impacted. Right? So you can argue that 
well, was the code written properly, et cetera, and, and all, of, you know, all of those issues. But um, really, we should, if we take a more systematic look at it, why, are, why do these devices have direct access to the global internet when, all they really, when what they really need is cloud computing power? And that's where, when we, ta when we start to look at, um, when we start to look at mobile edge computing, the concept is that, well, we can provide that cloud capacity, but in a more localized manner. It's not, uh, not a direct access to a uh, global network that can be more secure. And this is really, this is something, this is something where we should really look at as, as the OpenStack community, because um, what are the real use cases? I mean, if you really look at the use cases for private cloud, and why someone would build their own cloud. Yes, I mean, there are a lot of use cases, as we all know, in traditional data centers, but this is a use case where it becomes really interesting because you're talking about lots of small data centers instead of one, you know, a few really large data centers. And so now in these so-called so remote offices that telcos have, they're looking at deploying lots of small data centers. And these things, while traditionally they ran just, they would just had routers in them or you know, other types of termination equipment, now they can have servers in them and they can actually run the application that's needed to enable your IoT device. And this actually becomes an interesting business model for telcos because they could actually uh, offer, you know, they could, they could create a service where you can load your applications into that. Um, so as the OpenStack community, we sh we, one of the things we need to think about is how do we reduce the footprint of what an OpenStack deployment looks like, how the number of nodes we need just to get it up and running, because some of these areas may be pretty small. They may just be a couple of racks. You know, how do we, how do we make it worthwhile to put OpenStack there. Um, so these are, these are the kind, you know, the, these are the kinds of interesting, interesting problems that uh, come up when we discuss how, how we're using OpenStack and we discuss with telcos, you know, in the telco industry, how, uh, how they look at using OpenStack. So, um, so, the, so when you break down one of these, one of these things, the, the, the concept is called really a next generation central office. And um, next generation central office is really about um, how you change what's in that so-called central office. And it's called a central office because traditionally you had landline switching there, which now is not really there anymore. So you have a lot of uh, activity, a lot of, I mean, a lot of great real estate hardened and power redundant. And how do you use that effectively? Well, we've got all kinds of devices in the home. Uh, we've got, you know, devices in the office, increasing amount of connected cars. Um, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening. And these places would be ideal to host that kind of connectivity and provide that type of secure connectivity that um, couldn't uh, take down, you know, that, that um, would be better than having, say, uh, everything run from a public cloud. And so that's, that's a really key uh, use case from an OpenStack perspective. Um, now, there's, there's a lot more needed than just implementing OpenStack because uh, you know when vendors are looking to build this type of software, they need a lot more support than just saying I can I can put a VM or a container on there and write your application. There's a lot of communications, uh, a lot of middleware, a lot of uh, you know analytics, rules engines, other types of things that need to be brought into the picture, and so. Ha um, the way we look at it is uh, integrating OpenStack with a number of other platforms, 
number of other uh, pieces of the puzzle to put together a platform for, for IoT that can fit into a next generation central office. So in order to, in order to do that, we really need to go through almost a four-step process to modify, effectively get developers to change the way some of these applications are developed because a lot of times what you have are hardware vendors who have just been used to building embedded software and now they're thrown into the world of the cloud and they just port their software over. But what we really want to do is get to the point where what you're doing is starting there, yes, just you know, start with a classic OpenStack, run it in a VM type of thing, but eventually migrate that into um, more of a cloud native environment where you actually break up your application into the different components that I outlined, the, uh, you know, what's in the data center, what's the controller layer, what's the, what, what lives on the device, so that you can then distribute those components out into your next generation central office. So um, once you do that, and then you, then you need, to, so you need to connect those applications, uh, those different pieces together uh, with, with uh, some type of connectivity. And this is why by, by, by spreading out those, those pieces, it allows you to really define the rules about you know, I can, when I connect to my, uh, when my device connects somewhere, it's only allowed to connect to this uh, NGCO and not just anywhere out on the internet. And to try to contain the types of problems that we talked about where, you know, if you have global access to anywhere on the internet, well, you know, that could be, that could cause lots of issues. Um, so, so there's, you know, when, when we look at the, uh, the various benefits of going to this type, going to this type of uh, environment, I mean, security, I think, you know, we all know, you know, running your logic in a cloud environment is going to be more secure than running it on a device. Um, We've, we've seen this, the, the idea of putting web servers inside an embedded device, um, you know, hacked up web servers that aren't standard and that someone just wrote, not a very good idea. Uh, so have those services served from a cloud environment and, you know, and use, use more secure types of messaging between the cloud and the device. There's a lot of discussion in the IoT industry over what those standards could be. Um, um, uh, you know, there's uh, standards, there's AMQP, MQTT, a lot of stuff's being talked about in the industry, um, all of which is, you know, fully standardized and multi-vendor. And those are, you know, those are the approaches that are, that are being looked at. But you know, the, the idea that uh, an embedded device could do anything that a complete uh, server should do is, is probably something that we need to take a look at a bit differently from the past. Um, and then, of course, and of course uh, being able to get to that level of consolidation where instead of having a vertically integrated cloud where you just have one service and you have the complete infrastructure for that one service separate from everything else. Um, from a telco service provider perspective, they'd like to have a shared infrastructure where they could serve lots of different types of devices. So that's, that's another area where using a cloud-based environment is definitely, definitely advantageous. It can give you better economy of scale. Um, and uh, so that's, you know, that's what we're, what we're looking at. Um, now, the other, the other concept is independent scalability. So if you think about, um, you know, I run out of my uh, capacity to do image processing, and so 
my device, my camera is useless because it's, it's stuck turning through some image or something, right? Instead of that, you could say, well, I just, I just allocate more cloud resources to turn through that while my camera still works and takes more, more pictures, right? So independently scaling the processing from the control logic is a lot easier if you've separated those functions out into different services. Um, and then, of course, geographic, uh, geographically specific services, other types of things uh, become really, really interesting. So, um, I mean, I think these are, these are some of the overall uh, you know, points and concepts to think about when, when we talk about uh, mobile edge computing, um, why you would want to bring that uh, and connect it and use it for IoT applications um, versus a public cloud, and, and the, the benefits of those, not just for telcos, but also for the end user to get cheaper and more secure uh, access to, uh, to their IoT devices. Um, so um, I think, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to uh, open this up for questions. Uh, we have a microphone. Uh, if there's, uh, there's interest in uh, questions or, or other, other discussions that, that people would like to have. And if you want to ask a question, please uh, come up to the, to the microphone. Um, so, I guess there, <laughs> there, there, there are no questions. Um, maybe, maybe this is uh, a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, no questions. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, you, oh, you've got a question, Sig. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a good question, I'm sure. Um, so at Mobile World Congress last yeah. year, a lot of talk was about uh, IoT and the carriers. Yeah. And a lot of the people were saying, well, Amazon's kind of got a, a heads up um, mm -hmm. with, with what they've done. Yeah. The, the, I think the idea of the carriers was that if they, can, if they can get a monopoly on the last mile interface, there's... Uh, some advantage they can lock in. Do you see uh, any of those protocols kind of favoring the carriers, or do you see just some encrypted over the top type of uh, protocol taking taking root? Well, that, that's an interesting question. I think I think the uh, the the carriers uh, they have sort of two advantages. Actually, it's not just that they get an advantage on latency. That's the one that you know, immediately comes to mind. But actually they have the advantage that they've already invested and built up all of these, uh, these locations for historical reasons. So they, so they have essentially real estate. Now, will it be the carriers themselves who win in this market or will they effectively sell that real estate to a third party who will then figure out how to uh, how to link all those distributed centers up with Amazon or, or, or Microsoft or others, that, that remains to be seen. Right? I mean, you know, right now the carriers are definitely trying to take advantage of this. Doesn't mean that they will be the ones who, who, who succeed, but um, the concept of having a hierarchical method for these, you know, massive number of devices, we think probably you know, depending on which study you look at, it's something between 20 billion and 50 billion devices that are going to be out there, right, in the next few years. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's something that needs to be handled in a hierarchical manner. So, as I was talking about, you, um, you need to have these mobile edge computing sites, these next generation central offices to deal with that. And whether they are, continue to be owned by telcos, or whether they're owned by um, large public cloud providers or whether they're owned by third parties, just like sort of how the cell towers got uh, effectively 
taken over by third parties who lease them back, that might happen with these uh, sites as well. It would be the same type of architecture, it's just who owns it and who makes the money from it might be different. Um, I thought there might be more questions on, uh, you know, on the security aspect, given that uh, we had the big outage, but at the same time, probably a lot of us uh, traveled here over the weekend and <laughs> missed it. So, uh, but um, I, you know, I added that I, I, I just, um, you know, it is something to think about in terms of the uh, sort of limiting the attack surface uh, by having uh, limiting where such a massive number of devices, if you have 50 billion devices, where they can talk, because otherwise you could have a potentially very large botnet that could do a lot of damage. Um, anyway. So um, right now, I think the, uh, there, there's the sort of the problem of having lots of different standards. Um, you have pretty much uh, every telco announcing a strategy uh, on how they want to manage lots of distributed data centers, but they're all different. Um, so over time, there could be some standards. Where, where we are seeing standards are at the lower layer, at the communication mechanisms uh, between devices and sort of and their controllers. Because um, saying that everything should be, you know, it, it, obviously cloud services generally they have REST interfaces, but saying the REST interface should carry all the way to the device is starting to be something being questioned, given that uh, you know, it's hard to write a really secure HTTP, HTTP server, it's really hard to, to do that. So uh, when you have a device that can't just run a standard build of Apache, you have to question whether that's the right protocol to use to talk directly to the device. Um, well, the reason for adoption of this model would really be a business reason. Um, if you are a uh, service provider, you're today, and you're facing the fact that most of your traditional revenue sources are being subsumed by OTT services, then what you're selling, if you, if you don't have new services, all, what you've got left is really plain bandwidth to access the OTT services. So the question is how do you, you know, how do you adjust your business model to, um, to provide services that are useful? And this is a growth area and an area where uh, some type of hierarchical architecture is needed and where the capital is, at least for the real estate part, the capital's already been spent. In fact, some of the capital for the uh, equipment's already been spent for NFV purposes. So there are already servers in a lot of these data centers for other purposes anyway. So that's, uh, that's driving some of the models where they say, well, okay, there's a lot of capital already spent. How do I leverage and get the best use of that capital um, versus uh, competitors who would have to build all of that out themselves? So there's a sort of uh, a advantage of having all that already there. Um, and that's driving some of the some of the need for this. So, um, yes, if there if there are no further questions, um, if there are no further questions, uh, I guess we can be finished. I'm 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 here. If you anyone wants to wants to talk, or you can uh, you know talk after the session. Thank you.